Hi everyone and welcome to the second episode of our Malta Squad series. Today we will present you the Kawasaki Z1300, the legendary 6, the Autobahn Stormer. So without any further ado, let's get it started. In order to fully understand the impact of the Z1300, you have to consider the historical context in which Kawasaki had introduced it 40 years ago. So let's take a look back at the year 1979. The world population had just reached 4.3 billion human beings. The Iron Curtain divided the world. British elected Margaret Thatcher as the first female Prime Minister. The Russians invaded Afghanistan and China introduced the one-child policy. In the same year Pink Floyd released the album The Wall and Sony started selling a portable cassette tape player named Walkman. Renewable energy sources were not really famous back then and there also was no internet yet. I guess that sets the frame. The average street bike had become more and more powerful by the end of the 1970s, which led to an increasing number of fatal traffic accidents involving motorcycles. Nevertheless, the motorcycle manufacturers still engaged in their own kind of a cold war. The arms race for the biggest and most powerful engine that had ever been put into a serial production bike. In order to remain competitive and to offer an alternative to the Honda CBX, the challenge for Kawasaki was to design a game-changing bike one more time. The head of Kawasaki's development department, Tadashige Yamada, looks back on the creation of the Z1300 in an interview which was published in a German motorcycle magazine in 1979. He said, quote, Our development plan included the following considerations that led to the creation of Project 203, the internal codename for the Z1300. We wanted to develop a bike that would be the top model of all Kawasaki four-stroke multi-cylinder motorcycles. It had to be a prestigious touring bike of the highest standard in terms of performance, equipment and styling. That's why its engine really had to be the ultimate, a transversely mounted inline six-cylinder engine with two camshafts, water cooling and a shaft drive. After five years of development, Kawasaki presented the Z1300 to the public on the IFMA in Cologne, Germany, in September 1978. The Z1300 six-cylinder engine dwarfed the specifications of the CBX and all other bikes on the market with a displacement of 1286 cc and a performance of 120 horsepower.
In November 1979, 40 hand-selected European journalists had the opportunity to test ride the Z-1300 on a closed landing strip on the island Malta in the Mediterranean Sea. A German motorcycle magazine reported about the tests of the 1300 that, quote, after the first turn of the throttle, even experienced testers had an upset stomach. Kawasaki itself referred to the Z-1300 as a royal rocket in an official press release. And the motorcycle press was excited. It displayed the bike on front pages with huge headlines and gave the Z-1300 more or less creative nicknames, which did not really help the whole situation. Here are some examples. Autobahn Stormer. Beastiest of all beasts. King Kong. A hyperbike for California. Big bikes like the Honda CBX, the Suzuki GS1000, the Yamaha XS1100 and the Kawasaki Z1300 were often referred to as quote, hyperbikes at that time. That term meant a class of racing motorcycles above the superbike class with the largest displacement, the most power and the highest top speeds in those days. Other motorcycle magazines asked rhetorical questions like quote, bike or beast? and quote, motorcycle or monster? These days, Kawasaki did not take critical questions about the manufacturer's power race seriously, as the following quote from an article published in German Motorcycle Magazine in 1978 proves. When asked whether Kawasaki was aware of its responsibility towards teenage buyers, Kawasaki's head of planning, Tsuboy, evaded the question by answering, I don't get the point. He actually doubted whether 100 horsepower would be safer than 120 and rightfully declared, it is primarily about the rider. I guess that was and still is correct. While the UK-based magazine Motorcycle News acknowledged in November 1979 that the Z1300 was, quote, a superb example of technology by anyone's standards. It also asserted that Kawasaki had, quote, gone overboard in many people's minds. And their evaluation was absolutely correct. Due to the specifications of the Z1300 and the wide coverage in the media, the general public was outraged. People thought that a line had been crossed. People thought that something had to be done. The voices that demanded to limit the power of motorcycles got louder and louder. As a reaction to that and in order to avoid regulation by law, most motorcycle manufacturers agreed to self-restriction on a voluntary basis and in 1979 eventually started to limit the power of their street bikes sold in Germany to a maximum of 100 horsepower. The P1000 
period of self-restriction in Germany lasted for almost 20 years and eventually ended in 1999. In that year the Suzuki Hayabusa GSX 1300 caused a similar controversy like the Z1300 two decades prior to that, which led to a new voluntary limit at 300 km per hour that most manufacturers still comply with today. test in the magazine Cycle, published in the February issue 1979, shows how the Z1300 was perceived. Quote, the new Kawasaki 6 is everything people who hate Japanese motorcycles have always said they would come to. Heavy, wide, fast, encrusted with technical ornamentation, Lurchy, stiff in suspension, low, smooth, non-participative and immoderate in nearly every particular. Anyway, the Autobahn Stormer is a pretty comfortable bike that was and still is capable of pretty high speeds if necessary. Personally rode the Z1300 for the very first time on the days of the video shoot and I have to say that it was an awesome experience. Although the brakes as well as the suspension are nowhere near a modern bike, the six-cylinder engine is really quite a unique work of art. In my opinion, bikes like the Kawasaki H2R would not exist today if it wasn't for all those ancestors like the Kawasaki Z1300 who paved the way to where we are now. I also think that people today are much more able and willing to accept the Z1300 for what it is. Not a monster, but much rather a technical masterpiece of its time that simply pushed the limits. Since Kawasaki has relaunched a Z900 series and started to market two new models with a classic look in 2018, what do you think? Should Kawasaki design, manufacture and distribute a modern version of the Z1300 with a six-cylinder engine in 2020? Or should they rather stay away from such a project? Let us know your opinion in the comment section below.
Okay guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this video. If you want to support the channel, please subscribe, like our videos and comment below. In our next episodes of the Malta Quad series, we will show you the Kawasaki Z1000 ST as well as the Z1000 MK2. Ride safely and see you next time.